the fifth time in the SRA Hershey's Cup Series. Welcome everyone to the Daytona 500 as we are getting set for a 50 lap event here today in which one driver may add their name to the list of Ryan Acosta, Sean Galligan, Kyle Matthews, and Anthony McCurry, or we could today potentially see the first ever repeat winner in the Great American Race. Seth Cole alongside Michael Norman for today's event. And Michael, I know that you've taken part in several of these Daytona 500s. What can these drivers expect in today's event? Well, considering the track, the way the track is now, it's going to be pretty much a high, you, we could see the high line come into play in this one. It's definitely going to be an interesting race. Um, this will be the first time that we, we will be on the track with all with all 42 participants. So that's going to definitely come into play here. The object of this is to try not to lose the draft because as we saw during the, uh, during the Can-Am duels, if you lose the draft, you're going to fall all the way back. I mean, you would almost think you'd have a problem at that point. Because they, they caught lap traffic like crazy. So you're just going to find a buddy, try to stay in the draft, and just try to work your way up towards the front. Now you mentioned the fact of the possibly it being a high line. You took part in the clash here just a few days ago. Is there any possibility of that bottom line being able to work against the top side? Oh god, yeah, I drove my ass off in that race. But, uh, and that, I'll tell you something, that felt good to come back and to drive that race car, to be honest. But, uh, it, it can work if you have enough people on the inside to help you, or if you have a big enough run, you can kind of, just, like you say, like we've seen in real life, you just pull down slingshot almost. And also today, for the very first time, and probably for the only time this season, we've got stage racing, but at the end of each stage here today in the 500, we throw the caution, they're allowed to come to pit road, we line them all back up based on where they finished at the end of the previous stage. So restarts could be really interesting in today's 500. We've got Nathan Hudson on the pole. He qualified in the pole during pole day qualifying alongside of Trent Dunham. You've got Tim Walsh and Kyle Matthews, our K&M dual winners, but we're going to go to trackside and get the command. Drivers, start your engines. And you must have little voices in your head that tell you exactly when the command's about to happen. No, nope, I have a timer that's down on the bottom of the screen that tells me when five minutes hits. <laughs> I'll so tell I, you, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with Nathan Hudson. As you look at the starting lineup here. And for the only time this season, you're going to get a starting grid on the bottom of your screen. All other races, you'll be looking down in the descriptions, so enjoy it while you can, guys. But yeah, here's your starting lineup for today's Daytona 500. And yeah, you mentioned Nathan Hudson. I mean, there's been, to me... This season so far, we've had a lot of drivers who struggled last year getting some accolades already here at the beginning of the season. You had Keith Batson winning the Clash. He's still chasing his first Hershey's Cup Series victory. Nathan Hudson, he's trying to find victory lane for the first time since Season 2, but he's starting on the pole for today's race. And I look at the car behind him. Tim Walsh, been a while since we've seen him go to victory lane. He was able to win the first K&M duel, so it's almost looking like maybe some of the drivers that we saw struggle last year they're trying to get themselves a good start to this season. Yeah, definitely. And Seth, I, hope, I wish you weren't so lazy, because that's a cool-looking starting lineup. <laughs> well, starting lineups are very time-consuming, so that's one reason why I don't do them. But uh, it's the 500. So it's, it's a special race, so it calls for a special occasion of me, yeah, you're coming, just lazy. And me coming out of my hibernation to make a, make a starting grid. No, you're just lazy. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> So as you can see here for stage one, we're going to have 15 laps of racing. Uh, the stages today are going to be 15, 15, and a final 20 lap stage three. So we'll have to see um, how that plays out. 15 laps, you mentioned about losing the draft. That could happen in 15 laps, so some drivers may have to rely on the cautions for lucky dogs. But here we go. Fifth time in the history of the Anastasia Hershey's Cup Series. We're getting ready to go racing the Daytona 500. Let's roll. Good side-by-side -side start, but Tim Walsh didn't stay on the back bumper of Nathan Hudson, so look for Trent Denham to get the lead going off in the one. See, that's the big thing. You, you talked about this being a highlight track, and this is what I've been seeing all weekend long in the clash and the Can-Am duels. That inside line could move 
if everyone stays lined up, but on that inside line, you're more prone to want to take it three wide down the back straightaway. The outside line, they have no choice but to stay up against the wall. They get the better uh, straightaway speed. Yeah, I'll say, and you see that they already took the break up in the pack. And look at this, it's... Cody Smart gonna go three wide for the race lead here. Who's gonna lead the first lap in the 500? It's gonna be Trent. Trent's gonna have the run of the outside. Powell's Matthews is almost thinking about making it four wide. You know, I talked about the fact that, you know, we've had four former Daytona 500 winners. Ryan Acosta is the only one that is not in this field. The other three that have won the Great American Race are in this field here today. Kyle Matthews winning in Season 2, Sean Galligan winning in Season 3, and Anthony McCurry, the defending winner of the Great American Race, all with a chance of becoming the very first two-time Daytona 500 winner. Do you think the odds might be in their favor? It very well could be. I mean, look, as you see, Cody Smart pulling out to decent-sized lead. Usually when you get a lead like that, you it's a it's a very dangerous situation. But with these cars running free wide behind them, he's, he's loving what he's seeing right now. Cody Smart last season in the Hershey's Cup Series non-charter system had three trips to victory lane, including the season finale at Auto Club. How's it got to be for this guy in a charter for the Hershey's Cup Series this season out in front leading the Daytona 500 as a rookie? Very strong race car. Anybody can lead it. And I'm not trying to to to, dim it, to, to build a, diminish words, you know, because I can't speak them. <laughs> not trying to diminish anything, but anybody can lead a Daytona. It's all about staying out front when it counts. Well, yeah, and to your point, I would think that this would be one of the tracks that a rookie like Cody Smart would take advantage of because we usually say whenever we come to a super speedway, Everyone's on a level playing field. Doesn't matter whether you've got a lot of experience, whether you have a little experience. As long as you're in the right place at the right time, you've got a chance of winning a race at a super speedway. Exactly. As you see, look at uh, Kyle Matthews. Going to go for the lead, but he, he was abandoned. Yeah, Sean Galligan. It was two da former Daytona 500 winners working together wow, there for really a moment. Like Kyle. <laughs> Johnny Gardner going to go down to the inside three wide. They're going to stick him in the middle. And there's our clash winner, Keith Batson there, that white 39 in the middle. He's got his teammate, Cat Tellier, behind him. So far, we have yet to have Lincoln go to victory lane in a points-paying event. With Batson winning the clash, they've already won an NSRA event non-points-wise, but... Could today, could we see Keith Batson or Cat Tellier finally get Lincoln that points paying win? Good block on there on Dylan Young right there. He, oh, oh, got Galligan hit the wall. Yeah, Galligan up there against the wall. And yeah, that's one problem here with Daytona. You get too far up there, and that wall just almost sucks you in. You see, Galligan still hasn't been able to get off of it, as he's going to get off of it just off the exit of turn two. Yeah, but he's, he scraped the wall the entire turn at that point. I wonder what damage that could have done to his car. Well, the fortunate thing for him is they're going to get a caution flag at the end of these 15 laps, and he'll get the opportunity to come to pit road and get any damage he might have received repaired. As up front still, it's Cody Smart, and you got to think he's wanting that two car of Dylan Young to get by Johnny Gardner, so that would be a Young Motorsports 1-2, because one thing you like to have oh. here at a super speedway is a teammate behind you. Yep, and there he goes, um, and he's going to try to go to the middle. I figured, he figured he'd probably try to go to the inside. There he goes, right there, trying to give draft to both lines, maybe try to stall each, stall each of them out. And you see Dylan Young wasn't able to get straightaway speed because it was about maybe two, three car lengths back to the 95 of Caleb Farrell before he got any help. That outside line with Gardner, Matthews, Batson, and Hudson, they were all lined up, and so that's how you were able to have three of those drivers clear the two by the time they got to turn three. I'm looking back here through the field as far as some movers and shakers and there's a couple of drivers I'm noticing as well that are rookies that are up here towards the front of the field. Mentioned that 95 of Farrell but also the 77 of Alex Drayden and we've got a rookie out in front so these rookies are definitely taking advantage of trying to get good track position for potentially the start of stage two. Yep. Meanwhile, you got Kyle Matthews there trying to do something. Nathan Hudson's done a good job after starting Someone on the pole. Of... Five, the five is in the wall back there. Yep, Jake Baskinger. Cars are beginning to, I don't... Cars are beginning to break up a little bit. What do you think it is that's causing them to go up there <laughs> into the wall? Is there, like, uh, marbles up in that portion of the track, or is it just too much speed on the high well, side? If you, 
if you enter the wall, enter the wall. If you enter the turn a little too high, it's gonna you're gonna get sucked up into the wall, and it's just really difficult to get out of it, even if you keep your foot in it. Okay, Kyle Matthews, I thought he might get a run on Cody Smart, maybe on the high side, but Smart's doing a good job. I mean, you know, a lot of these drivers that are rookies took part in the Hershey's Cup Series non-charter series last season, so it's not like they're coming into these races completely green, completely fresh, not knowing what they're doing. Cody Smart's done a good job of controlling the draft, not letting either line be able to get a run on him. I'll say as we are now nine laps, well actually we're eight laps into this race, now on to the ninth lap, and so far, green flag, and that's that's been one thing that's happened pretty much this entire weekend, where we've only so far this, this weekend been under the caution flag twice, once in the Can-Am duel number two, and once in yesterday's uh, Pizza Deck Series race, but most of the racing here at Daytona has been under green flag conditions. Does that surprise you? Because normally we come to Daytona, everyone's wondering, when's the big one going to happen? No, based on what I've seen from the clash and even watch, from watching the duels, it's, uh, it's been really clean racing, except for when they encounter lap cars. And you got to wonder or if maybe they might encounter some lap cars here at the close of this stage. I mean, if, if a driver loses the draft almost oh, immediately... Yeah, nice slingshot. That's what you were talking about, that slingshot move from uh -oh, the top hear, side to the I bottom. A, I think I hear a lap car up ahead. That's what I was just going to ask. I was going to ask, is 15 laps a long enough time for the leaders to catch a car if they lose the tail end of the field at the very beginning of this race? Because I know we've seen drivers, uh, you know, encounter lap traffic this season already at Daytona, but I just never made a mental note of how many laps it took for them to catch said car. So I don't know Ooh. if that might be an issue here. It looks like Trent Dunham might have gotten a bit of the wall off of four. Yeah, and whoever was underneath them almost turned them. That would have been, I think, Sanfer in the 0-3? Not certain. Huston made a heck of a dive down there trying to get underneath somebody. Yeah, now it they're starting. It almost start seems like, oh, what, do, do, okay, do you know what the NSCRA K, K, uh, rules package is for this Daytona 500? Because I'm noticing uh, it's, it's really difficult to pass here. Uh, I'm not exactly... 100% certain of what the rules package is, but I do know that uh, uh -oh. these... Uh-oh. Look at the wall back there. That's, uh... Was that Drayden in the 77? Oh, no, that was Joshua Michaels, the Honda in the 10. Up and into the wall, the Samurai Jack Honda Accord. But no, I'm not... To go I'm not in entirely up to speed on what the rules package is. All I know is that, uh, for the most part, with the way that the rules package is made, drivers are able to hold it wide open a lot more on that high side. The biggest trip up for a lot of the drivers on the inside line, from what I understand, is they have to lift just the least little bit on the exit of turn four. And unless they have somebody behind them to help push, they lose a lot of momentum. That top side where they're able to pretty much hold it wide open is why we see them be able to get that really good run off the exit of both turns two and four. Kyle Matthews with a little help from Sean Galligan gets second place again. Three laps to go in stage one. Yeah, Galligan, though, does not want to work with Kyle Matthews. <laughs> this is the second time he's left the 09 out to dry, uh -oh. and they are catching a slower machine. That is Cole Baker in the 18, a teammate to the 44, and the 44 is going to use him as a pick. Wow. Now, that might not necessarily be a good thing, though, for Galligan. He got out to a pretty big advantage over everybody else, and he's going to have yeah, but a little over two laps to have to try and defend that position. Yeah, he will. Hudson gets gets clear. Now Hudson moves into the fifth spot. And there's Matt Haas. How about that? We haven't talked about the defending champion yet, oh, but there they go. 78 is right up there now into the uh, sixth position trying to take fifth. And is that our Clash one trying to go for the lead on the inside? You better believe it is. Keith Batson down on the bottom tried to Al get Matthews both. Matthews abandoned the 12. I think Batson was trying to get a two for one there on Cody Smart and Sean Galligan. <laughs> and now if Galligan, this is a fortunate thing for him because now he's got everybody just about a car length behind him. Now he can start controlling the draft again. But for a moment, he was a sitting duck. There he was. They'll come around this time by and it will be theoretically the white flag for these drivers for the completion of this first stage and Galligan's gonna have to do a lot of mirror driving. Yep. 
Because keep in mind, with the point system we have here this season, if you win a stage, you get a playoff point that counts towards the chase for the championship. And here comes Batson. He's got friends on the bottom. Oh, but he didn't clear them. And there's another left car. That's James McLeod in the 51. Will he come into play in this finish, or will they be able to split him? He's oh, holding he up the outside line. He's going to hold up the inside line when he goes in the corner. Oh, Batson going to try and move him. Now they're going to split him. And Batson's going to get by for the race lead with help from the slower machine of James McLeod. He won the clash a couple of days ago. He's going to have himself a stage win. Batson will win stage one. Matthew is second. It's like Sanford and in third. Sanford so. third. Yeah, teammates there in second and third place. And then Brandy Gonzalez, John Art, Leon Alvarez, <coughs> Alex Drayden, Dylan Poti, Sean Galligan, and Garrett Sidner will all get stage points for this one. And they'll all start in the top ten for the start of our second stage. So Keith Batson wins stage number one here in the Daytona 500. We'll take a commercial break and be right back for stage number two in the Daytona 500. I'm trying to keep my feet on the ground. I'm getting to like this feeling I found. I'm getting to love the thought of having you. Welcome back to the 5th Annual Hershey's Cup Series Great American Race Daytona 500 as we're getting ready for our second stage here today, another 15 lap stage. Keith Batson won the first stage and it kind of put me in mind, so we're going to take a look here at the top drivers that have the longest winless streak so far in the Hershey's Cup Series. 102 races since Brandon Gonzalez has been to victory lane. And on this list, the only driver that hasn't been to victory lane yet is Keith Batson. He's still looking for his first career win, but these are some drivers that certainly would love to snap their winless streak with a Daytona 500 victory. I kind of like how you have, you're sponsoring that Catalyst Mint Series there. Yep, Catalyst, the S NSR Catalyst Mint Series sponsoring the longest winless streak grid here. But some, some names we might see up here at the front of the field at the end. Hudson, who started on the pole. We got Dylan Young, who was up in the top ten for a good portion of this. Cole Baker, on the other hand, he's going to have to rely on uh, our next caution flag because James McLeod fell a lap down just before the uh, stage ended last time. He got the lucky dog. He's back in the lead lap. Cole Baker, though, restarts a lap down. But all 39 cars that took the green to start the first stage, take the green to start the second stage as Batson gets us underway. Yep. <laughs> and like I said, this is the one time that we're actually doing it this way with uh, double file restarts at the beginning of each stage. So you got to think that drivers are going to be going, I don't want to say crazy, but conservatively crazy. They're going to want to get as much track position as they can here with them being all bunched up. Absolutely. John Art very quickly gets by Keith Batson. He'll move to the race lead. Sean Galligan almost got him in the left rear quarter panel. Look at Dylan Poteet slingshot to the high side. Yep. All of a sudden, we're starting to see some drivers up here towards the front that we didn't really see anywhere near the uh, beginning middle of our first stage. You've got Poteet. John Art, we saw them kind of pop up into the top 10 Alligator. near the close of the stage. Yeah. And there's Alex Drayden. Stay to the inside. Yeah, Alex Drayden, the 77, up here with his teammate Dylan Poteet. Their other teammate, James McLeod, started at the tail end of the grid here for this second stage after getting the lucky dog. And here comes Drayden. He's trying to get that inside line working. He's got to get some help, though. It's a little ways back to Leon Alvarez. 
And they are three by three, about four rows deep in that second pack. Not sure they want to do that, otherwise this lead pack might get away from them. Yeah. Oh, look at this. No help for Galligan. Drayden's going to clear for the race lead. So for the second time today, a rookie shows the way in the Daytona 500. For how long, though? And Alvarez down there on the bottom. I believe that is Matt Haas in the 78 right behind him. Zachary Fitzwater in the 59 trying to get the inside line going. And just like that, the inside line goes three wide and loses all their momentum. But they're going to go three wide for second. 77 knows who to draft. And Galligan going to peek to the inside, but he's going to kind of stay outside. Throws a block on him. And of course, we also should make mention, we already mentioned already that Sean Galligan and Anthony McCurry are former winners of the Daytona 500. The team set Cole somebody. Baker Motorsports. Uh, I don't know who that was. I think that's Keith Batson, actually. Yes, it was. The Lincoln, our stage one winner, all of a sudden fades way outside the top 20 after getting in the wall. But the last two winners of this race drove for Seth Cole Baker Motorsports. So we'll have to see if maybe their streak will continue on to three. They've got three entries, Galligan and McCurry, both former winners. And of course, as we mentioned, Cole Baker currently a lap down, waiting for a caution flag to get himself back on the lead lap. As John Art trying to get that inside line going, and he's got Dallas McIntosh there in the cheese at Chevrolet along with him. I think that's Galligan also there, third on that inside line. Another driver coming up through the field there that started near the rear is that's number three of Brooke Allen. Brooke Allen and right behind, or right in front of her is uh, Johnny Gardner. But yeah, Brooke Allen there in the three having a good run. Kind of interesting that we haven't really seen uh, a lot of teammates work together. The three all by herself. We saw when Hudson was up here, he was all by himself. We're seeing John Art up here, no teammates for him. It's almost seeming like your friends are where you find them right now. I would have thought that, especially yeah, where you look, need to have look. someone push you, you got to have a teammate there. They put Brooke in the sucker hole there. Now, Brooke Allen, not a rookie anymore. She won Rookie of the Year honors last season in the Hershey's Cup Series, but they were treating her a little bit as a rookie right there, putting her in the middle, but now she's got some friends. Brandon Gonzalez behind her in the 23. Johnny Gardner trying to lead that middle line. In five the 55. by five for the lead, though, up here. At least it was for the, for the moment, it looked like it. Yep. Dylan, and Dylan Young trying to lead the hard charge on the inside is going to get along Sean Galligan. And we saw Dylan Somebody Young. Somebody in the was, wall. Somebody in the wall again. That's uh, Fitzwater in the 59. And we saw on that graphic before we went green, Dylan Young, what one of those drivers. <laughs> you would. <laughs> you would. <laughs> we saw that Dylan Young was one of those drivers that was in the top six of longest winless streak. That goes all the way back to season three at Homestead, or was it season three? It might have been season two, actually, at Homestead Miami Speed. Zero. Okay, I'll agree with that. At Homestead <laughs> Miami Speedway. But I'm seeing some of those names that we saw on that list. They're up here now, just inside Dylan the top Young. ten. Dylan Young, Brandon Gonzalez just back there outside the lead pack. And look at the 88, the season two champ, or season one champion. No, season three champion. I'll get it right one of these days. Dylan Young, oh look, the top line broke up a little bit. Dylan Young could walk away with the lead. He's going to go up to block, but here's who's that coming on the inside. Cat Tellier, the number 70 Lincoln, teammate to Keith Bass, and we already had a Lincoln win a stage here today, but there's Chris Dodd right behind her there in the 88. Oh, felt like somebody hit the wall pretty hard there. I think that was the, almost the 42. That, and... That's even a number. <laughs> uh, nope, was, it wasn't the 42, it was the 14. Close, it's a teammate, you were close. <laughs> yep, I was close, definitely. All right, new top three. Yeah, Tellier, Chris Dodd, and then Brooke Allen now up there at the front of the field. And, and Brooke's going to dive low trying to take second spot. Here comes uh, 77 and the 05 there. I also just looked here at the tail end of this group. You got Benjamin Miles in the 25, former chaser last season. And don't look now, but the defending champion of this race is now up inside the top 10. Anthony McCurry has fought his way up, currently in the 10th position, trying to go for two Daytona 500 victories in a row. Outside line with a better run. And you got two drivers in this field who have won both the Great American Race and a championship here in the Hershey's Cup Series. Kyle Matthews won the season two. Uh, Daytona 500 followed it up with a championship in season three. Anthony McCurry won the 
uh, Daytona 500 last season, and he won the championship back in season one. So, you know, Chris Dodd, he's up here in third place, the season two champion. Could he join those two as a driver with a Daytona 500 win and a championship trophy? Six laps to go in the in stage two. Right Hurt now, Cat Teller, if she can continue to defend. Right here. This, this whole pack up front right here is ten cars. And right now, if the stage were to end, or if they stay where they are when the stage finishes, they'll be the only ones that get stage points heading into our third and final stage. Ooh, I was almost about to ask what's something wrong with Brooke Allen, because she kind of just pulled low. Interesting thing, too, as you, as you mentioned that, she didn't really gain a whole lot of position on John Arndt. John Arndt, all by his low. John Arndt. John Arndt stayed to the outside and passed her. Yeah. I mean, he was all by himself in that middle line and passed three cars down on the bottom. I don't know if something is amiss on the three. I mean, she looks like she's up to speed. Maybe the car just doesn't handle well in the bottom line. That's true. She could just be looking for a way to get to the top side. And look at Anthony McCrory shoving the two of Dylan Young through one and two. That 61 car is really flying up through the field. He's already up to the fourth position two laps after he was 10th. Yeah, I wish there was a way. To, I wish there was a camera that just looks back through the back straightaway as they're coming at you to see him. See these drivers snake their way down that back straightaway. Dylan Young now up in the second position, and here comes that Napa Chevrolet of Benjamin Miles. Benjamin Miles would love to have a Daytona 500 victory to add to his accolade, and right behind him, John Art, who had a career year last season, picked up his very first Hershey's Cup Series win, made his very first Hershey's Cup Series chase for the championship, and the side-by-side, -side, Miles to the bottom, and it's a little ways back for Cat Tellier to have any drafting help. Can they push the 25 to the lead down the back straightaway? They could do it again. Oh, Dylan Young up into the wall. Four wide. Oh, keep it together, guys. Keep it together. Contact. Chris Dodd in the wall. And there goes McCrory. Spinning down towards the pit entry. Anthony McCrory in the 61. Not a lot of damage to the 61 car. Oh, Zachary Fitzwater in the apron. And more importantly, no caution. We're still green. And it's still side by side for the race lead. How did only one car spin after all that contact? I don't know, but it was Anthony McCrory, and that was up inside the top 10. So just like that, we got some new players that might get themselves some stage points as a result. Absolutely, but that killed the momentum. <laughs> yeah, Benjamin Miles now gonna drift back maybe to third place, maybe to fourth. As Cat Tellier, two more laps to go. Can Lincoln sweep the first two stages of the Daytona 500? The odds look good. Yeah, they do. Oh, wait a minute, though. Benjamin Miles, he's been able to break free, and he might be able to get a really good run down this back straightaway if Brooke Allen stays with him. Tellier's going to have to play some defense here before they get into turn three. Might not happen this time, but it could very well happen because Brooke's a little too far back. But it could very well happen. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Going to try it. Question is, though, will Brooke Allen dive down there and offer any drafting help? Or will she stay not, up high with the 70? Not close enough. She's trying to get snip the draft off the high side there. White flag displayed here for this second stage to set us up for who's going to be starting where for the third and final stage. And it looks like Cat Tellier may be in control now. Well, maybe. Hold on. Miles has got Alex Drayden helping him now in the 77. He's got one more shot, and it may be right here down the back straightaway. Getting a good push, but can he make the move is the question. And if he makes the move, would someone be willing to go with him? Don't forget, Brooke Allen's going to, it looks like she's going to finish sixth. That's going to be the third row on the outside of the line at the restart for the last uh, for the last stage. That could be strategy on her part. Could very well, as the <laughs> second stage will go to Cat Tellier. So far, Lincoln has swept the first two stages of this race. Miles will get stage points as well. Alex Drayden, John Art, Joshua Michaels, Brooke Allen, and then look at these names. I said they popped up after that incident we had off four. JT Bryant, he's going to get stage points along with Dallas McIntosh. Cody Lamas, and Sean Galligan. But this sets Absolutely. us up for our 
third and final stage where they finished is where they'll start. Let's take one more commercial break and we'll be back for stage three. Bigger engines were easier on oil, but today's smaller high revving engines don't make it so easy. They can break down oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Kestrel. Tests show that Kestrel doesn't suffer a significant loss of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Kestrel, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine can make things hard on you. Kestrel. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. Make sure to tune in for the Internet Race Sports and Gaming Channel for the Season 18 Kestrel GTX Cup Series Daytona 500 coming soon. So we're getting set here for our final stage of the Daytona 500, 20 laps in this one. And we had a wreck, but we still haven't had a caution flag here yet in the Great American Race. Unless, so, of, course you, unless of course you count the two that are the stage ending caution. Very, very good point. I guess we'll count those as yellow flags since we're kind of grasping at straws here. But that caution flag was actually very timely as well because now Cole Baker is back on the lead lap. So all 39 cars that started the race are still running, still up to speed, and all on the lead lap. So it's 39? I thought that was 42. Nope, there are only 39 because of the, the charter system. Based huh. off of the drivers that had charters from last season, charter loans that went on and whatnot, 39 drivers this season for the Hershey's Cup Series field. Why didn't you just sell three other charters? Uh, because I'm not, because I'm not Mr. Monopoly. But anyway, here we go for our final stage here. Cat Tellier gets us back underway. Good side-by-side -side start with Benjamin Miles. <coughs> Remember that outside line? Yeah, John Art right up against thing, his the, back bumper. The, the three, I can tell you one thing, the three was definitely a little, a little bit of sleep on her part on that restart. She kind she was able to let uh, who is that? The, the 10 up in the line on that restart. Now she's kind of still drifting back a little bit. Her car is getting up there in that spot. And you know, it's kind of... going to try to play defense, but can't. And I found it very interesting, kind of getting into a, a driver's point of view from something, what, something that you said uh, with the whole fact of some of these drivers might have been trying to purposely finish in 4th, in 6th, in 8th, to have that outside line starting spot when we went back green. Wow, look at that pack already. Yeah, they're getting really antsy. Cat Tellier almost put Cody Lamas in the wall, it looked like, off turn four. But again, like I said, this is the only race where they're going to get these kind of restarts all bunched up here in the beginning of these stages. And now, going into the last 20-lap event, where so far we've had, as far as racing's concerned, clean, and, well, not clean, but we've had green flag all the way for both of our first two 15-lap uh, stages. These drivers are going to be fighting for everything they can get because if the field starts getting split up, we're going to have some issues. They're four wide back there again. You'd think Anthony McCurry, you'd think Anthony McCurry would have learned his lesson, but he was four wide again in the middle, just a little ways back there. That was uh, close. The ten pulled away, and that's not necessarily a good thing because these drivers, if they can have even a two-car tandem. They can get tremendous straightaway speed on a driver that's been able to pull way out in front. And here you see it. Watch how quickly the 0-5 of John R is going to be able to close the gap between himself and Joshua Michaels down this back straightaway. Be able to get in the split up into, into like three, three different packs again. And that's what I was meaning about these drivers fighting as hard as they can to try and get as much track position as possible. And correct me if I'm wrong, but does the 10 car have some right side damage? It looked like he had a little bit of scrape marks there well, on the right I side don't of think his. So. No, okay. I thought he might have gotten up into the fence there at one point when he swapped lanes up in front of Brooke Allen on that restart, but maybe that's just my eyes playing tricks on me, which it has been be. known to happen. <clears throat> I didn't... One thing I've noticed, and even during the class when I was driving, it's uh, 
Wow, look at that. Diller Posey and Kyle Matthews is going to try to go for the lead. Oh, it's not Kyle Matthews. It's Caleb Farrell. Kyle. Yeah. It looked like Kyle Matthews. Okay? <laughs> Similarly painted. Caleb I mean, Farrell goes to the lead with the help of Dylan Poteet. I mean, may maybe Kyle Matthews uses MetLife insurance. We don't know. Oh, but he still is. Yeah, Kyle Matthews' car is a light blue, though. Light, light, uh, the white and light blue car. That is true. But he doesn't have a 95 on the side. Anyway! Oh, I couldn't see the 95, okay? Not until I got a clear shot of it. That's okay. I couldn't I couldn't see the uh, invisible damage on the side of the 10 car either, so we're even. <laughs> Speaking uh, of the 10, 10 car, car... Back to second place. And he's trying to take the race lead once again. Got a nice slingshot down the back straightaway, but is he going to get any help? Nope. Not from John Art. Sanford might offer some drafting help down low. Leon Alvarez there. It might be two against three. That inside line might be able to get a push down this front straightaway. That outside line is not all lined up very well at the moment. 95 got it at the line, though. Charles Sanford, three super speedway wins in his career, but never at Daytona. Now up in that third position, and we saw him finish up inside the top three at the end of the first stage. Kind of faded, drifted back at the second stage and now up here again at the third stage and talk about another driver that's fought his way back up to the front how about Tim Walsh who won the first Can-Am duel started third in this race now he's up there currently uh, battling three wide for the sixth position yeah saw Jake Baskinger in the wall uh, a while back I think that was back near the beginning of stage two he's now up here closing in on the top ten and look at Caleb Farrell Trying to get the inside line to work against Joshua Michaels, and he's got Leon Alvarez to offer the drafting help. Yep, and look, they're both going to go by him. That 10 car should probably pull in front of Tim Walsh here. Now, I'm going to go back inside the head of a driver and ask you, if you are a Chevrolet driver, if you're a Ford driver... I am a Chevrolet. Well, I, I'm aware of that, but I'm just saying, you know, in, in speculation... If you're a Chevy driver, Ford driver, a Toyota driver, are you more likely to try and seek out a driver with the same manufacturer as you to draft no. with? It's whoever you can find in the closest proximity that will work with you. So Toyotas and Chevys, they can work together just yep. as easily as two Chevrolets. Yep. What, something I've always wanted to know, and now I finally know it, and now that I know everything, I feel kind of cheated. Anyway, Dylan Poteet now going to go for second place on Tim Walsh. Now, Dylan Poteet had three wins last season. That was the most of any driver last year in the Hershey's Cup Series, but he's never won the Daytona 500. He's got a shot now, but I also noticed as well, guess what we got out in front? Our third rookie of the race out in front leading the Daytona 500. Cody Smart did it in Stage 1. Alex Drayden did it in Stage 2. Caleb Farrell doing it here in Stage 3. Yep. And the thing that's going to be good for him is he's going to be able to control the draft. He's got about maybe a car length, car length and a half on second, third place. So he's going to be able to try and pull along whichever line he wants to. But I think he might want to try pulling that inside line because the outside line looks like it's formed up pretty well with Tim Walsh, Leon Elvis, and John Art. Another driver I noticed, and we know his love for Daytona International Speedway, especially during the Daytona 500 weekend, and that's that red number one down the inside line, Trent Dunham. Well, now he's up to the outside line, but he's now cracked the top ten. Got Dylan Poteet right in front of him. And I think I saw Dallas McIntosh just barely get a bit of the wall off of turn four. We've got maybe about 20, 25 cars up in this lead pack, and Coming I think in the wall, we can... I uh, super and a lap out. car, we're approaching a lap car. I'm guessing it was Quentin Moore that was in the wall, the car that you heard in the wall. And I don't know who that slower machine is. We don't have any lap cars yet. Everybody was back on the tail end of the lead lap. I don't see anybody yet. Look at these drivers. Look, look at them. There's a mass trying to get up into right there. The 95 is going to be able to control the to control his his spot on the track if these cars just don't get broken up here and you talked about maybe a slower machine that they're going to be catching that might be why they're all three wide trying to get themselves Five in the, the best position again. possible yep baskinger boy that's the second time we've seen him up and into that safer barrier 
Or was that him or was that John Art, maybe? I think that might have been the 0-5, his teammate. Oh, it looked like the 5. Alright, Kolakar is able to get side arc he's break away here. Yeah, that's Chris Dodd. Big Tim run. Walked in the wall. Tim walked in the wall. And look at the 88. That's all by himself he's getting that run is Chris Dodd on Caleb Farrell. And is he going to be able to clear? Oh, Joshua Michaels going down there to offer drafting help. Caleb Farrell, those rookie stripes not helping him now. He's left all by himself on the top side. Get Trent Dunham right there, too, in fifth spot. Trent now Dunham there. Fourth. Trent Dunham there being pushed by Leon Alvarez. I mean, gonna be could this. Trent break the Daytona curse? He's already done it once. Trent Dunham has a Daytona 500 victory in an NSRA event. It was back in the Season 10, uh, now retired Season 10 Snickers Cup Series. But I'm certain he'd love to have a Daytona 500 victory here in the Hershey's Cup <laughs> Series as well. That's what I was going to say was, are we counting his Daytona 500 victory because he's going for his second career Daytona 500 victory. And you know, you look at the stats too. I mean, it's the beginning of the season. We really can't start speculating towards the chase yet, but three of our four Daytona 500 winners in the year they won the Daytona 500, they also made the chase for the championship. The only exception to that was Sean Galligan in season three, and he just barely missed out on making the chase. Well, we told you there was something wrong with Brooke Allen, and now there she is pulling up the pack. So you might be right, there might have been something amiss on that three car, I'm not exactly certain, but... It'd be something mechanical with her car, she's just trying to ride it out, I don't know, but she's definitely holding up the outside line. We're gonna have to see if she's able to merge with this pack, and if she, that might have just been the reason of her maybe losing the draft, why she's so slow, or if they're just gonna continue to freight train her. Meanwhile, speaking of freight train, Caleb Farrell kind of giving... Uh, Chris Dodd back a little bit of his own medicine. We saw Chris Dodd freight train Caleb Farrell a few laps ago. Farrell says, I'll do the same. And look who's going to go for the race lead now. The defending champion, Matt Haas. Could he get a Daytona 500 victory just a couple of months after winning the championship? All right, beginning to break free. I bet I can guarantee you that Trent Dunham is not happy with that. No, that whole outside line got completely backed up, but... There is still a little more than six laps to go, so there is still a chance that if they're all able to get wadded back up, they might be able to catch these drivers. Their only hope right now is that all these drivers up here in this group of seven, they continue to race double wide, because they're not going to produce nearly as much speed racing side by side as they would if they were racing single file. Yeah, but that's also going to uh, help the leader break out too. Yeah, absolutely right. Chris Dodd actually has Joshua Michaels behind him again, and we saw uh, a few laps ago Joshua Michaels helped push Chris Dodd to the lead past Caleb Farrell. Will he help push him this time? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Looks like he's going to stay to the outside line this time. So alliances, definitely, I, I think you can attest to alliances go away just as quickly as they're made at super speedways. Wow, look at the run that Dylan Pote had. I don't think he's going to be able to go up there to block, to blo oh yep he is, okay, he's got to look at Trent, going to fight back now. Joshua Michaels nearly put his car in the wall trying to slingshot around the high side off of four, but Matt Haas stuck with him, and now you're seeing this group as they're battling, that's bringing those Trent, other drivers back Dunham. to them. Trent all by himself down on the bottom, but look here, Brandon Gonzalez, 102 races since his last win, he's now up here at the tail end of this lead pack, and that Mitsubishi Lancer. Oh, Trent, stop it. <laughs> Boy, Trent went up there really to try to break the momentum, but I don't think it worked. And I'm seeing some other drivers that could get up into this group as well. Levi McIntyre in the 99. How about Daniel Gilbert in the 4? Let's not forget, Daniel Gilbert up here now as a chartered ride for Michael Norman Motorsports. Where did his first win last season in the Hershey's Cup Series non-charter system come at? Right here at Daytona. Absolutely. The Michael Norman Motorsports Super plate track program is really really incredible it's it actually it's baffled me on how how, how good it really is you know it, especially with you know in Hudson even though he's kind of drifted back but being on the pole and stuff it all comes down to this and somebody looked like they dropped below the yellow line there not certain who that what that might have been the was it the 23 I think it might have been Brandon Gonzalez I'm not I certain say it was the, the, maybe the five maybe, or the 15 maybe might have been the 15 there. yeah it could have been the yeah. 15 Side by side up front for the lead again. Well, I mean, the good news for Tim Walsh is he didn't advance his position, so he's going to be okay. But meanwhile, up front, you got Joshua Michaels now up there in that Honda. He's got three wins, three, or no, I'm sorry, yeah, three career wins, two 
wins in a Honda in the Hershey's Cup Series. He'd love to try and win the 500, but right now, how about Caleb Farrell? Two and a half laps to go. You're out in front leading the Daytona 500. What a way to make your Hershey's Cup Series charter debut than to win the Great American Race. Can he hang on is the question. I don't know. We'll see. What do we have? Coming to two laps to go in the Daytona 500? Absolutely right. And look at Trent Dunham. He's got friends on the outside line now. Can they make a late charge? He's got John Art with him, and he did have Brandon Gonzalez, but Gonzalez just then dived to the inside line. And here comes Matt Haas. Couple of former champions to the inside line. Matt Haas and Chris Dodd going to the front. Lap car, I hear it. Then the question is, will they catch him before the end of this race? I certainly hope not, because the last thing I want to have happen here in the Daytona 500 is a lap machine deciding this race. As here comes Chris Dodd to the bottom for the lead. Three by three, two rows, three by three. Dodd, Poteet, Alvarez up high. Haas, Farrell, and Michaels. Haas got it. Or not, uh, sorry, Dodd, Chris Dodd. And somehow Dodd he cleared. It. Yes, he did. And what is it with that 88 and being up in, in the front at Daytona? Hey, it, it's that, it's the 88 power, junior power, as it's Chris Dodd out in front showing the way, trying White to flag. join Le uh, no, Levi McIntyre. No, yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> trying to join uh, Anthony McCrory and Kyle Matthews as a champion and a Daytona 500 winner, but he's going to have to hold off one of the best in the business, Matt Haas, the defending champion. Will he be able to make a move? Farrell nope. to the inside for second. That could be it. It is. That's better to get. With the way we've seen it now, that 88 is going to go to victory lane. Chris Dodd, he was in the top six for winless streaks. He'll snap it today with a Daytona 500 victory. Chris Dodd wins at Daytona. His last win came during his championship season back in season two at Mid-Ohio. And today, he finally snaps the winless streak and finds victory lane once again in his Hershey's Cup Series career. And I don't know what it is, but three out of the five Daytona 500 races we've had have been won by former Hershey's Cup Series champions. It was Kyle Matthews, Anthony McCurry, and now Chris Dodd. I guess if you win the championship, somewhere down the road, you're, you're basically guaranteed a Daytona 500 victory right now. At least that's what the stats are saying. Right? <laughs> so everyone wants to win the championship this season. And again, like we said, prior to this race, three out of the four drivers that won the Daytona 500 also made the chase for the championship later on in the year. Chris Dodd hasn't been in the chase since season two. Could this have just locked him up a spot in those 16 positions for the chase for the championship later on this year? It very well could have, you know, just like you said, he's got, he's got to stay consistent, stay in the top 30 or uh, whatever number it is that you that you do for your for your to get into the chase. And uh, it's just like you said, usually the people who win the Daytona 500 don't always have the best of seasons, but we'll have to see if the 88 car can can keep it consistent. Very good point. Speaking of that as well, we got our stage finishers. So Chris Dodd will get not only uh, 10 points for winning the stage, but also a playoff point if he makes the chase for the championship. How about Caleb Farrell, rookie of the race here today? A second place run, almost had a chance of winning the Daytona 500, but I think he will definitely take that for a rookie debut. Matt yeah, Haas. No, nobody ever remembers who finishes second in the Daytona 500. Well, good point. Caleb, Caleb will remember, but uh, maybe nobody else. Come on, I'm doing a little rookie plea, okay? If you ain't first, you're last? Yep. Well, neither you nor I were in this race, so what does that make us? Hey, that means we're not first and we're not last. Hey, it's a win-win. Well, no, it's not a win-win. It's a lose-win. But anyway, Matt Haas, <laughs> after winning the championship last season, following it up with a great run here in the 500 of third place, Joshua Michaels, Dylan Pote, that was your top five. Trent Dunham, he didn't win, but he's going to get stage points. I think he'll I think he'll take a sixth-place finish, better than being behind the in the garage uh, in the 500. Leon Alvarez, Emmanuel Hartnett, where did that Toyota come from? He gets eighth, John Art ninth, and Brandon Gonzalez in tenth. They will get stage points for the completion of this third stage. But regardless of all that, the man of the hour is obviously Chris Dodd as he'll be going to victory lane for the first time since season two and first time in the Daytona 500. But that's going to do it here from today's race in the Great American Race, Daytona 500. Michael, I want to thank you for joining me here on Commentary. <laughs> no problem, man. It's always fun except for when I have to wake up at 9 a.m. and 
Wait, I will literally wake up in the studio because it's you know it's it's time to time to uh, time to commentate. So I have to wake up and to open my eyes, and all of a sudden I'm magically in the in the in the commentators booth. I'm sitting there like, why am I here? Yeah, you guys better appreciate the commentary here today because uh, we ended up. Uh, I don't know when he went to sleep. I went to sleep at two in the morning and then got up at nine. And I think I went to sleep at like a little after midnight. I think. You went to sleep till midnight? You were still in... Why are we having this conversation in the middle of this? We'll talk about this afterwards. But anyway, thanks everyone for tuning in to today's Daytona 500. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to become part of the crew today. We will now show you your full finisher results, as well as your rookie points and your overall points heading into next week. The trucks are off next week. We'll see you for Pizza Hut X Series and Hershey's Cup Series action from Rio de Janeiro, as you've been watching production dance and offline racing at its best. Mike will give us a random thought to close it out. Food. That's random, and I want some. <laughs> Bye, everyone.